Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, bringing you the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some thoughts on building a custom home on your own lot. You know, 20% of my business comes from helping people buy and sell land, raw ground, if you will. And most of those plan on building their own home. Hey, it's the American dream, right? So today, I'm gonna to share some key points uh, that'll help you learn about buying land and share some insights on building a custom built home. Hey, and then stick around. I'm going to share a market update that'll help you be successful in your next real estate transaction. There's a good number of uh, smaller builders out there who build maybe one or two or three or maybe five or six homes a year. And most of the production builders don't get involved in this type of thing. There is one exception and that is Dries. In fact, they have their own on your lot division. It's a combination of production processes along with custom building and it really does help move things along. Here's some key examples of things that they do. Number one, they have one-stop pricing. You can check in with them and they can price out the whole thing, all the site work and everything else. And mentioning site work, hey, they do a free site analysis and that can be a big thing, especially if you're having to put in wells and septic systems and driveways and drainage and all sorts of other fun things. Number three, they'll buy your lot or buy a lot for you. And number four, They'll provide the construction financing so you don't have to go out and get a construction loan. Number five, all it takes is a 10% deposit and that can even be the equity in your lot. Number six, they have their design center which really speeds things along with selecting all the different items that you are going to want to or at least you think you're going to want to select when you buy or build your new home. And number seven, what they say is we want you to get the home you want and the way you want it. Hey, you might want to check out their website for some more helpful info like five steps to building a custom home, six things to consider when building a custom home, and eight upgrades to include when building a custom home. And if you'd like a personal tour of any Dries property or their design center or meet with their custom building staff, then hey, text or book a call below. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. You know, over the years, I've helped many people to buy their own little slice of heaven. I mean, who doesn't dream of building their own home? I've helped people buy everything from a single city lot to, I don't know, everything from 10, 20, 60 acres. And I've also helped them subdivide that land. Uh, I've worked in multiple counties for my clients to help them get that done. Um, and everyone has a story on why they want to do it. It's their retirement income or they just wanted one slice out of a larger tract or they wanted to subdivide it and give some to their kids. But hey, I can help you with all that. There's a lot of things that go into buying land. You got to look at like highway cuts and it, whether it's in a floodplain or not. And are there regulated drains that run across it or easements that get in the way of you building on all of it. One of the biggest things is utilities. Are they available? Where are they? How much is it gonna cost to bring them to you? And then there's zoning. Can you build what you wanna build? Same thing with covenants and restrictions that maybe are laid down upon the land. You gotta ask yourself, and you wanna know before you buy a piece of ground, can you build what you want to? And if you don't have the cash, then financing is a little different when it comes to land. Now, I can put my decades of experience to work for you, and I'm gonna share some thoughts on that later. Hey, let's take a breath and talk about something important here. Builders have procedures, and it takes some forethought on your part if you wanna make those procedures work for your best interest. So before you go walk through a model home or contact a builder, you need to be registered. It's the only way I can put my decades of experience to work for you, hey, and think about it. You don't know what you don't know. Hey there, over the years, I've worn lots of hats in the real estate industry. In this short video, I'm gonna share what they were, what I've done, and most importantly, how that can benefit you. I bought my first house while I was still in college. So yes, I've been a first time home buyer and I know what that feels like. And I've developed systems to take the anxiety out of the process so that it's a more enjoyable experience for first time home buyers. Six months after my first house, I bought my first duplex and I fixed it up. What a learning curve that was. Hey, I was putting in the gas line and uh, all of a sudden we had flames. <laughs> my buddy grabs this bucket of really nasty water we'd use to clean up the floor and he throws it on the flames. He got me, oh my God. But hey, you know now years later, I put all the gas lines in my house and my pole barn 
and uh, they passed on the first inspections. I learned something new every single day. That led to me being a contractor. You know, we had those pickup trucks that the sciences say, no job too big or too small. Well, our largest job was rehabbing a 42 unit apartment project. We didn't take it to the studs, but it was pretty darn close. Hey, and the most interesting job I ever did was probably we lifted a house up off its foundation, literally, and then we tore out all the uh, basement walls, hauled them away, and then we re built all of those basement walls and set the house back down on the foundation. That's pretty cool. So hey, I can walk through a house with you and I can point out opportunities and I can answer questions. Sometimes uh, even on new construction, there's a situation where maybe the builder doesn't do that type of thing, like maybe a finish a basement or whatever the case might be. Well, hey, I can help you out with that. And uh, I know a guy. From there, I became a property manager. I managed something like 500 tenants. So, hey, maybe you're wanting to uh, build this new house for a long-term rental. I can help you. We are affiliated with uh, Key Renter Indianapolis North, Does uh, offers property management services throughout the Indianapolis area, and I'd be glad to hook you up with Michael Simmons, who'll take good care of you. From there, I became a builder myself. I built single family homes, apartments, condos. You know, I started on projects like all these that I do these videos on, pounding nails and running crews. So I have experience that others do not, which means to you that I can anticipate problems and I can solve problems, maybe even ones that others are totally clueless about. So most importantly, when I work with you on a new construction project, I am the only person in the transaction who by law must act in your best interest. In fact, I have a fiduciary responsibility to do so. The typical purchase agreement on an existing house is eight pages. On a construction contract, it might be 40 or 50 pages long, or maybe even twice that. So there's nobody that will guide you through that except for me. Think about it. You don't know what you don't know. I can be a difference maker. I will be your advocate. Hey, some problems are not so big, but you just never know. Home building is a people business. Stuff is gonna happen. No matter how good the builder is, stuff is gonna happen. It just is. Hey, it could be something small like construction manager not making a meeting or something on the plans not getting done or the builder not making progress. Maybe the builder forces you onto another lot. That's not good. Hey, I've seen builders build over setback lines. In fact, once in Colorado, I had a deal where the builder built over the property line. Not fun to solve, but we got it done. A lot of times on new construction transactions, I feel like a marriage counselor, okay? There's a lot of pieces to keep together and they're all moving at the same time. So you're sitting around on a Sunday and you, and you say, hey, let's go look, uh, let's go walk through some model homes. So before you do, uh, give me a quick call or text, I'll get you registered. This holds true even on weekends. It's the only way I can employ my decades of experience for your for personal benefit. My fee is paid by the builder and there's no discount if you don't use a realtor, but there's a lot of benefits to doing so. Too many people have had bad experience with builders. I can put my experience to work for you facilitating successful outcomes with new construction homes. You know, from being a builder, it was kind of natural to become a developer. I oversaw engineering, state highway cuts, putting streets in, sewer and water lines, building in all kinds of weather and on all kinds of building sites. I can remember one time we were down in Brown County and we were putting siding up on like a three-story condo project and the wind's blowing about 40 miles an hour and it was cold. That was not fun, but hey, we got it done. As part of those projects, I did planning and zoning work and I continue to do that for my clients today. That can come in real handy if you're, if you're wanting to uh, subdivide a piece of ground or maybe you wanna build a home on your own land. Back in the day, I did some home inspector work which means to you, I can drill down on those reports and I can create outcomes for you that are just a whole lot better under the circumstances. Hey, and you might be surprised to know that you can actually have a home inspection done on a new construction home. And you would be surprised, but they have about the same number of defects as an existing home does. For a few years there, I was an appraiser. I did conventional FHA and VA assignments. Again, I know the drill. I know how to read a report, what can be done about it which means you have a greater likelihood that the deal will close. For 17 years, I was a mortgage lender. In fact, I grew the second largest mortgage brokerage in the state. 
I know the ropes and can at times make you aware of opportunities that will literally help make your dreams possible. It pays to know what cards you hold. And hey, you don't know what you don't know. One of my specialties as a lender was construction lending, including rehab financing and new construction. I can help turn a house with good bones into the house you want before you even move into it or to build your dream home on your own land. Then I was a commercial real estate and due diligence inspector across the United States and Canada for the big Wall Street banks and investment firms. I worked from Calgary to Charleston and from Toronto to Biloxi. I did about 500 properties a year, including multifamily, factories, distribution centers, grocery stores, restaurants, hospitals, doctor's offices, retirement homes, and high-rise office buildings. I got those assignments because I could walk into any market anywhere on the continent and I could size up what the situation was and figure out how to add value for these investors. If they trusted me to do that, maybe you might want to too. Throughout most of my career, I've been a licensed realtor, both here in Indiana and in Colorado. I've worn lots of hats. In fact, it's hard to find a realtor who has a greater depth of experience than I do. All in all, I've played a role in something like 5,000 successful transactions, which means to you there's a higher likelihood that you will achieve success. So, before you sign up with your brother-in-law's third cousin because she's family, consider if you really want to place the largest financial transaction of your life in the hands of, well, your brother-in-law's third cousin who just got their license. There are good reasons why over half of my customers are repeat customers. And another 25% are referrals from those people. My clients tell me I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Now the good news is if you build a suit or build a custom home, you get what you want. Build time is typically anywhere from six to 12 months, but that'll give you time to get ready to sell your existing house. And then when the time is right, we can get it sold for you for the most money and in the quickest fashion. Hey, maybe you heard Zillow has ranked Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country. And good lots or pieces of ground, they're like good houses. They sell fast. So if you want to look, hey, call or text me. And when it comes to the builders, let's get you registered, even if it's on the weekend. If you have a home to sell, this next section is guaranteed to make you money and to save you money. But if you have no home to sell, then hey, feel free to bop ahead to the next chapter of the video. Okay, if you're undecided about whether you need to buy or sell first, this is not my first rodeo. I'll be glad to talk and share the pros and cons of going one direction or the other, and then you can be the judge for your own self about what works best for your own personal situation. By the way, we offer a free room-by-room -room analysis. There's no cost and there's no obligation. And I guarantee you that I can help make you money and I can help save you money. My staff and I prepared a short video film about this. It highlights 13 key points that you'll want to pay attention to because they'll help you sell your home for more money. Plus, I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. If you want to know everything there is to know about buying land or building on your own lot, or maybe just new construction in the greater Indianapolis area, or you just want to walk through a home you've seen advertised, text me or give me a quick call. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. The numbers are in for April for the greater Indianapolis housing market. The median sales price has bounced back to its high of 300,000. Sales and new listings were both up, which, hey, considering the time of year, that's really not a whole lot of surprise, although they are better than a year ago this time. All that caused sales to be a tad lower. Last year, they were running on median about six days, Today, they're all the way up to eight days. Not sure that makes a whole lot of difference. Sales are going off at 1% under list on average, and the active inventory has increased to 3,016 homes. And everyone appreciates whatever loosening there is in the market. Over in Hamilton County, there's a somewhat similar pattern. Although prices haven't reached back to their peak, uh, they are settling at about 441,000 on average. Both sales and listings were up substantially, like 13 and 16% respectively. And the median days on market is just six days, which means good houses are selling fast. The average home is going off at list price and inventory remains tight. Hey, so what can you do about tight inventory? What I say is, be like a Boy Scout, be prepared. 
Builders are offering rates as low as 4.99% on a 30-year fixed rate. And I've seen banks uh, offering closing cost grants of $5,000, which means they don't have to be repaid. And I've even seen some sellers of existing homes doing the same. And I know of a couple banks that are offering 100% financing with no mortgage insurance. Hey, and if you have a down payment, you still might want to consider going that route and then taking those funds and paying off whatever installment loans and car loans and trucks and boats and planes and all your credit cards and student loans or whatever you might have. It just might work. Hey, to learn how you can take advantage of any of these strategies, hit me up below, give me a quick call or text, and make it a great day. Hey, if you'd like to know everything there is to know about moving to or living in the greater Indianapolis area, then be sure to tune in every Tuesday as we do our tour of new construction homes for sale. Then on Thursday, we walk through existing homes for sale. And then on the weekend, we take a look at what it's like to actually live in Indiana. Now keep in mind, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this helpful, you'll love this next video. Watch this one right now.